it's another Friday. That means it's a dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. Joining me, Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun at YouTube. Question today sent in by Manfred in Germany. Manfred uh, sent in a great question. I actually have no idea where this podcast is about to go. I'm going to paint a picture here. Manfred has data where each company takes up uh, several rows. Okay, And normally, if we had to build a formula that relied on this cell, Within the company, um, we would, you know, build the formula using dollar signs. So I want to point to that cell and press the F4 key uh, times this value over here in column A, and press the F4 key one, two, three times, and then divided by uh, this number here, I'll press F4 twice to lock the row, uh, and we get a formula that's going to point to, you know, the first column, first row, and cell B2 of that company. But now the problem is, if we had to copy that formula down. Uh, you know, down to here because those dollar signs are hard coded into pointing to, for example, B2, it's going to be the wrong formula. All right, so I have a solution for this. I have a solution for this. I can uh, build those formulas uh, as normal and then use edit, replace, and say I want to replace every dollar sign with nothing. Make sure I go into options that way I'm looking at the formulas and replace all. All right, now I essentially have relative references, but that always point to B2, for example, and I can now copy those formulas down into the other companies, and things are going to work great. All right, but that's not Manfred's problem. I'm going to go on to the second sheet here. The problem is, is that Manfred is using conditional formatting. He has conditional formatting that says, hey, if that cell contains a 5, it's yellow. If it doesn't contain a 5, it's not all right, and so when we go and look at that conditional formatting here, if we go into manage rules and edit that rule, uh, you'll see that we're hard coding dollar signs in the conditional formatting formula. Uh, now I'm lost, I don't know how I can globally replace. Uh, all of those dollar signs in the conditional formatting formulas right now. If we would copy formats, control C. Edit paste special formats. Uh, it's not working. If this is a five or this is a three, uh, it's not looking at it. It's looking at this one back up here. It's changing all of the companies when that first one is a five. That's not what Manfred wants to do. All right, so I'm going to throw this one over the wall to Mike, uh, and I'm going to sit here and try and puzzle it out myself. We'll see what Mike comes up with. Uh, usually, when I throw it over to Mike, I know where he's going. I will just uh, be shocked and amazed with you uh, when we come back, and hopefully Mike will have a solution. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Shocked and amazed? You can't be shocked and amazed if I'm going to do some formula here. I learned most of the tricks from the books you wrote and your message board. If you want to be shocked and amazed, go to the message board and, and uh, see some of the responses that Aladdin or Houdini or Don Quixote or all the other amazing Excelers do over there. All right, uh, so there it is. We're going to do some conditional formatting. Uh, and whatever we put in whenever one of these box needs to trigger the conditional formatting. Now, as I think of this, if, if I'm going to start, for instance, here and tell all of these cells to look right there, well, right here, if I'm looking up there at that cell, I could say, if I'm looking at that cell, I'm zero away. When I go down one, if I was looking at that cell and it moves down as a relative cell reference, how many would I need to move up to get back there? Minus one, then minus two, because if I was looking there, that one just moved down to there and to there. So that's uh, the trick we're going to use inside of offset. And when I was thinking about this, I, I was thinking, well, this whole formula has to move down here. So I came over here and I says, well, uh, I need a zero here, and then a minus one here, and I just highlighted those and copied it down until I got to here, and I said, oh, in here I need a zero, right? So these are the numbers that I need inside of offset for how many rows do we need to go up? So if I can think of a formula to get that sequence of numbers, I can just plop it inside of offset. So how about rows? We'll do rows. Actually, not rows equals mod, because rows would be how you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But mod will give us a remainder. And so we could say inside of the mod rows, and I'm sitting in J 
three, so I'm going to say J dollar sign three colon J three close parentheses, and then comma the divisor. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I'm going to put seven close parentheses control enter. Now let's copy this down and just take a look. Okay, that's not quite what I want. I really want a zero here, so I'll hit F2. And from, if I scoot over here, from the rows, I could just subtract one. Right now I have my zero, one, two, three, five, six, zero, and then F2 again to put it in edit mode, and I'll just put a negative, a negation, a unitary operator, boop, just like that. So that is that little formula right there I'll use inside of offset. That is the uh, piece of the offset that will say always how many rows to go up. And the reason why is because when you get down to here, you need to go 0 up and then minus 1. So that ability to increment a number, cycle through, is very useful here. Let's just see if we can get this to work right here with numbers equals offset. The reference is going to be here, and I need to lock it. When I go down, I need it to move, but when I move this way, I need it locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 key and lock it in front of that column reference, comma. Offset says that's where I want to start always, and that's going to be partially relative and partially locked. But now, rows, how many from this starting point, how many rows do you want to go up or down? Up is negative. If I'm in row this one right here and I want to go up, 3 minus 1 would be 2. So uh, this is where that uh, incrementer goes, control V to paste that. And then comma, columns, we're going to take this column, we don't need that argument, so I simply close parentheses. Control Enter, I'm going to drag it down and then over. And just to test, I'm going to copy it, paste it down here. Oh, it worked. Now if I change this to a 9, sure enough it worked. Now we need one other thing before we can do conditional formatting because it needs true or false. So I highlight that range, hit F2. And right at the end, I'll say equals. and Whatever your criteria is, you'd put it here. I'd put a 5 here. Generally, I like to put it as a cell reference, so I'm going to click right there, F4 to lock it in all directions. And then I'm going to immediately come up here and type a 5, and then put criteria. All right, now let's see if it works. Control C, Control V, Control V, uh, change this to a 5. And sure enough, that works. Now I'm going to control Z, 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 Z. And I'll just delete that. I'm going to come up and get this formula right here. Copy, escape. I don't need all those right there. Now I'm going to highlight this whole range. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt O D. New rule. Click there. That. And uh, whatever format you want. I'm going to do fill, whatever it is, yellow. Click uh, OK. We have our rule there. Click OK, click OK. Now let's go ahead and try it. With this all highlighted, I'm going to use my uh, paintbrush. That's also right there. Um, double click it, and then I'm going to click there and there, and however many other ones there are. See, when I double click it, you can see the little uh, paintbrush escape to turn that off. And now let's try it. The test is boom. Does it work? Boom. Sure looks like it worked. I'm going to click right here and hit Alt O D, and just look at that formula. Sure enough, everything uh, moved uh, beautifully just like we wanted. Now, uh, I always like to uh, put criteria up here like this. If I change this to 9, then boom, those ones don't change, and that one does. All right, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Excel and the Mr. Excel message board for helping me to learn how to do Excel. We'll throw it back to uh, Mr. Excel. I'm sure he has something even more amazing. Hey, thanks, Mike. That's cool. I love these dueling podcasts. I knew that Mike was going to use Offset somehow, but he used it in a way I didn't ever anticipate. Very cool. I think even Mike was happy with that one right when he put that 9 in there. You could see that sparkle in his eye. Now, while Mike was working on his, I knocked out some VBA here, just the, the good old standby. I uh, went over to VBA and said, hey, we can do this brute force method. Let's go through each individual cell, A2 to G6, format conditions dot add with our formula. Here's the thing that just threw me, though. It didn't didn't work the first time. When this formula is an relative formula, no dollar signs in the formula, it is 
based on or considers the active cell. Uh, so if I don't do cell.select before I set up that format condition, it's not going to be correct. Uh, so normally in a macro, we never have to select uh, a cell before we can do something to it, but when we're setting up conditional formatting without a dollar sign, sure enough, had to do cell.select in order to get it to work. Uh, we'll run this real quick, and what that's going to do for me is set up conditional formatting in all of these cells that point to B2, but it's a relative reference to B2 instead of a absolute reference. Now we can use Mike's trick, double click the format painter, and paint, 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 press escape, and now the big test, put in five, they all turn yellow, six they don't, five yellow, six they don't, five yellow, six they don't. So uh, not as elegant as Mike's, just doing uh, some brute force VBA to, to set those up and then create something that can be copied. Uh, Mike, definitely excellent trick using offset there. Uh, very, very cool. Hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.